In part 1, Mobina and I demonstrated how to add a gripper to UR robots in ISAC-SIM, and in this tutorial, we will show you how to set up the robot for ISAC Lab using reinforcement learning. Uh, next up, we want to um, basically use the uh, ISAC Lab Reach task, right? That you described how mm -hmm. to modify it. Can you talk a bit more about the task first? So the task is basically to align the end effector of our specific robots with a certain moving target. And we are going to get the help from Isaac Lab, which is a framework built on top of Isaac Sim. So Isaac Lab has two different workflows, a manager-based workflow, direct workflow. And in our case, we are going to use the manager-based. So first you need to create an external project. Technically, it is not necessary to create an external project, but it makes everything way easier because we are isolating it in repository and it's easier to also share it with the community. So usually, as you said, the internal is for like, if you want to have collaboration or like add something to the Isaac Lab repository, you can use the internal. So if you enter external and then you just define the path that you want the project and then name. As I said, there are different types of uh, manager base and direct workflows. We are gonna choose manager base for single agent. I, I personally, I prefer to always um, activate all just in case I want to switch later, but um, we already know what we want. It's not necessary. Yeah, for this uh, project, we are gonna use SKRL library and then we are using the PPO algorithm. Okay, great. Okay, now we need to direct to the directory that we created and install the project. Okay, so uh, I just opened the reach test and uh, before we install anything, we need to create the conda environment. Like you said, I will have to install the um, external project, which is kind of connecting the repository with this external project. And uh, yeah, it looks like everything went well. So what are the next steps? So when we create an external project in Isaac Lab, what we actually get is a template environment. And by default, this template environment is set up for the simple carpool task that kind of gives us structure to build on. And from there, we can modify the task definition for our robot and the problem that we're trying to solve. And as you can see here, there's a lot of different nested files, but we are only interested in a couple of them. And one of them is the environment configuration file. So we have all of our manager classes for the main components of the training pipeline here. As the flowchart shows that like the main pipeline is to have a neural network model to be trained as our policy and just to double check all the parameters inside agents, uh, the YAML file. We need a neural network model to be trained as our policy and then basically the SKRL library, the PPO algorithm that we choose is going to take care of it. So inside the YAML file, you can see the neural network algorithm architecture. For the card pull, it, the layer was 32 by 32, I believe, but because it's a more complex task, we need to change it to 64 to 64. And then, yeah, the activation is ELU and yeah, I think these are all the hyperparameters we need for the neural network. Now, if you open the reach environment configuration file, we have the neural network policy that we just talked about and the neural network policy decide which action the robot should take. So if you go inside the action configuration file. Here, based on the USD file that we created, we have six different joints. And what action configuration does is to basically change the joint position for each of the joints of the row. And then the input to the neural network is going to be commands and observation. Command basically tell the final target position of the end effector that we want to reach. But the robot doesn't know about the current position. So we need to actually feed the input as the observation too, because command is the goal that we want to achieve. So if you go scroll down to the observation configuration file, here we basically give the joint's position, velocity, the current command as the target position we want to reach and also the last action that was taken. Okay, so we have our observation and commands as our input to the neural network and it decides about the action. Now the action goes to the scene, which is basically inside the Isaac Sim simulation. And we kind of define everything there. This is the scene configuration, which has the robots, the light, the table, the ground, everything we need to have inside the Isaac Sim simulation. And then for the robots, you remember that we imported the USD file. So we need to also have the robot's description. So here we import the USD file and make sure it's at the right location. 
And then, yeah, we basically define the initial state of each of the joints. And also we define the actuators, the stiffness, the damping parameters and everything. So this file basically define our robot and then we import it inside the EMV configuration. Another really interesting thing that we can add to our pipeline is the event. Since we don't know the exact initial joint position, it's always better to introduce some domain randomization to our pipeline. And the way that we can do that is by introducing event configuration, which we did here. Okay, now one of the really important components of our pipeline is reward, which is needed to update the policy and to train the specific task to the robot. Uh, we have two different kinds of rewards here. So the last two one action rate and joint velocity these are the pre-made rewards that actually come with the mdp package by itself these are basically to penalize a fast action change and also a high velocity for the joints so making the trajectory to be more smooth we also have three defined rewards that we actually define them in the reward.py they don't come with the mdp package by itself and we need to define them based on the task that we have these rewards the first one and the last one are actually to penalize the difference and the error between the current position and orientation of the end effector and the commanded target one that we to reach and we have also end effector position tracking fine grain which if you go to the rewards.py it returns 1 minus 10 h of the error over std which is basically trying to encourage the accuracy and encourage reaching the target if the positional error is really minimal the 10 h is going to reach zero and then the re return is going to be one which increases the reward so yeah these are all the rewards that we have another really important component is curriculum and what it does it's gonna change the parameters as the policy evolves and it's really essential for having a more robust train so inside the curriculum we are going to change weights of the rewards at specific time steps so for the last two rewards which are action rates and joint velocity as we start the weights are really low but then in curriculum then we are saying that at a specific we are going to increase the penalty and make the policy to evolve and become better at the train. There's also a termination configuration, which is basically going to tell when the time is running out and the episode is done. These are all the components that need, we need to modify. And then we have our final environment configuration file that we instantiate all of the components that we have. And then we basically put the simulation parameters that we want. And we are also going to have a different environment configuration for the playing and training. Because for the training, we need a lot of simultaneous parallel environments like it's gonna be 2000 but for the playing we don't need that many environments so we're gonna decrease that so we're gonna have two different environment configuration and the next thing is that we need to install them so if you go to init file you just need to also register the play environment great i think now we have everything we can start the training after having defined everything um i will just copy paste your uh, your command line arguments i will instead of doing headless and launching 2000 environments um just to show the audience uh, i will use um 32 number of environments and uh, usually when uh, it's trained with headless um, i would also recommend um, adding dash dash video in order to generate some visuals doing headless training um, just to inspect. So this will take probably quite some time to um, train. So how about I'm launching another instance uh, to open a TensorBot. Maybe you can explain what TensorBot is for the audience. So yeah, when we use the uh, reinforcement learning, we can use also TensorBot to have all the logs and all the synchronized plots of what's happening inside the, during the learning process. So like how our rewards is evolving, during the time steps and everything. So we can launch the tensor board. So what I've done is to basically copy paste your command and put the log directory from um, this log folder here. So here we see the training uh, in real time. Hopefully, ideally, the reward should increase around like a thousand steps and start reaching the maximum amount of reward that we have. And yeah. I mean, we can already see that the robot is kind of going the direction. Sometimes the robots do some weird movements, but that's uh, normal in the beginning. And also um, the curriculum learning will start to really increase the penalty um, after 4,500 steps. So this will also smooth everything.
later on. But, uh, we will insert the finished training um, in the video. And now after training, um, we can use the play script to play a certain a checkpoint. This will usually be either the last or the best checkpoint that is trained. Um, this is loading the play disk. So we could also specify a specific checkpoint example from our last one. If I use the best agent, which in our case is the only agent that is trained, we can copy the and use the checkpoint uh, command line argument. This will not really perform well because it hasn't been trained enough, but yeah, we will uh, showcase a uh, finished training. So after having trained it, um, inspected the TensorBoard uh, training and uh, running the play script, um, I guess we finished this tutorial. So I think it was very clearly um, described and thank you so much for creating this one. So you mentioned this was from the train your second robot in Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab, the LA courses. What would be kind of the next steps? So we're going to build more upon the task and have like more difficult tasks trying to spawn a certain queue on our scene and teach the robot how to pick and lift the queue. So we need to work more on our rewards, observation, scene, everything. And also one more challenge is to like define and basically adopt our task for a different robot, like a humanoid robot, how it can lift an object from the table. And everything. so I think these are really interesting challenges to work on as the next step and stay tuned for the next tutorial. Awesome. So thank you so much again. And uh, we will add like a GitHub repository for everyone to just kind of run the training and play scripts afterwards. Uh, so we will find that on your GitHub. Yeah, again, thank you so much and see you next time. See you. If you have found this video helpful, consider subscribing as it helps a lot. I also want to take a moment to thank all my Patreon supporters. Without you, these tutorials wouldn't be possible. So thanks.